Hi, I'm Giovanni, Development Manager at Animex, and I'm going to explain the four key ingredients to a successful COBOL to Java transformation. Please be aware that everything I say applies equally when targeting C-Sharp. COBOL is always used in the context with other technologies. This means that most applications use files, or they access a relational database, or they run under Kix or UTM. Also, the source code itself has embedded languages, which you can recognize as exec SQL or exec Kix. What that means is that having a complete solution means having a solution that also transforms these embedded languages, and not only the COBOL code itself. Animex code turn has been designed with modularity from the start. This means it can handle multiple embedded languages and also multiple output languages. With regards to having many configuration options and much of intelligence out of the box, I want to talk about two specific examples. The first example is that of dead code. And with dead code, I mean code that is not utilized by other codes and also variables that are not used at all in the code base. Code turn offers three options. Just keep it in the target Java, keep it but comment it out, or omit it entirely. Whatever a customer chooses is good for us. An example of built-in intelligence is how we can apply context-sensitive transformation rules to the widely used COBOL GoTo statement. Now, in the most general case, a COBOL GoTo statement really implements a state machine. In these cases, we have to transform it into a COBOL.GoTo method invocation, where the GoTo method is implemented in a support library that makes sure that the control flow is exactly in Java as it was in COBOL. Static code analysis, however, can show that up to 95% of all GoTo uses are uses where the GoTo implements a form of loop or early exit points. And in these cases, we can transform it in Java to a break statement, a return statement, or a while loop. However, some customers still prefer the gobel.goto syntax for reasons of familiarity. And you know, that's fine too. That brings me to the third essential ingredient of a successful COBOL to Java transformation. Having a support library that ensures 100% correct COBOL behavior while being in Java. COBOL is a language where each statement has very interesting and special side effects. And it's the accumulation of all those small side effects in a large application that leads to behavior that can only be replicated by replicating each and every side effect itself. Doing that in a way that doesn't lead to code blow and unmaintainable code means that you have to introduce a support library. And this support library needs to be 100% accurate. While I could give you many examples of these subtleties in the COBOL language, I will focus on one very pertinent one, which is COBOL numeric fields. It's a fact that COBOL numeric fields can actually contain non-numeric data, by virtue of the fact that each COBOL field has a backing store which is really raw bytes, and redefines and other implicit redefining mechanisms can be used to really put arbitrary bytes at those locations. What that means is that in a COBOL to Java transformation, we can often not use the native numeric types of Java, like int or long or big decimal, because that would just not have the same behavior as in COBOL, because Java, being a much more strict language, doesn't allow non-numeric data in numeric types. Now you might ask me, so you never go to native Java types if doing a transformation from COBOL to Java? And the answer is, yes, we do, of course. If we can analyze and prove that the resulting behavior is correct, we will do so. A good example of that is COBOL loop variables. If you have a perform varying loop, for instance, and the loop variable is only used in the context of this loop, we will happily replace it by an int or a long in Java. Now, where we cannot do that, and where we would like to do it, however, is that of COBOL arithmetic expressions. As you can see, an arithmetic expression, when evaluated in COBOL, doesn't lead to the same result when doing it in the intuitive way in Java. If you're just using a double, an int, or a long, you just get a different number. And I've yet to encounter the customer that doesn't take his numbers adding up seriously. This brings us to the fourth and final ingredient of a successful COBOL to Java transformation. Once the transformation project is ended, the resulting code must be a good starting point to do further modernization. This really means two things. There must be absolutely no restrictions to using native Java types, native Java functionality, or native Java libraries. And it must be possible to incrementally change code, to incrementally refactor and modernize parts of the transformed code base. In other words, we encourage our customers to think for themselves how far they want to go in the further modernization of their application and at which pace they want to proceed. So to summarize, a successful COBOL to Java transformation needs a flexible toolset, a complete solution, a good support library, and it needs to result in code that lends itself for further modernization. If you want to learn more, please download one of our white papers at animex.com. You will also find many code examples.